Hi friends, a little bit of a different setup today and a little bit of a different kind of video. So I just uploaded a video postcard and on most types of videos, I reliably get one of two kinds of comments. The first is just like, I'm weeping, which is, you know what? I have one skill, but the other is like, oh, this format is cool. I wanna make these, or how did you make these? Or I wish I could make these, and you did make these. So fortunately, your friends and mine and Adobe have kindly sponsored a video for me to tell you a little bit about how I make my video postcards. I've learned a lot of new stuff in the past couple of months because I've been participating in something called Adobe Creator Camp, where you get kind of a, a course and a cohort, and you learn from a lot of great trainers. I know a lot of you guys watch Elise, she's one of them, and they are about to launch a new version of the course, so if you wanna sign up for it, there's gonna be a link below as well. I'm gonna be going over like three different stages of how I go through this process. If you're looking for tips on a specific feature, I've got timestamps below so you can just skip ahead to what you need. Video postcards are poetry laid onto video, laid onto music. So I've already gone out, I've shot a bunch of footage around my neighborhood, and I've got my song picked out, and now I need to put it all together. So I'm in my Premiere workspace right now, and I have got a ton of footage to go through, like 100 clips. So the first stage that I need to go through is like organizing all of this. And one thing that I find super helpful is if I click on this little icon right here, I'm gonna get something called Freeform View which is, here, I'll make this a little bit bigger, um, a way that I can kind of drag stuff around like their post-it notes and kind of organize stuff. And because I'm trying to like vary my shots throughout the video and not just have a bunch of like, here's all my face and you know, here's a bunch of shots in a row of, of the sky or of a tree or whatever, um, I'm kind of organizing them into like I've got a little group here of shots of my face so that you know when I'm looking for one of those, I can drag that in there. So I'm doing like a little cluster of sky shots over here. These ones are like the sidewalk, the street. We'll do some, some trees and green stuff in this area over here. I might also organize stuff as like, you know, close-up shots versus wide shots or things like that, just so that I can kind of, you know, if I'm looking for a specific type of clip, I can find what I'm looking for. Now that I've got some stuff organized, I'm gonna take this back into my larger workspace and I'm gonna start laying it out. And something that I'm often trying to do is like time stuff along with music. So I could just start looking at my footage and saying, you know, I want like an in point here and then I want it to cut out there, whatever. Here's kind of a neat trick if you're trying to, you know, time something along with music. I kind of think of this as like, you know the TikTok trend where you just select a bunch of recent videos out of your camera roll and it makes like a pretty collage for you. This kind of is a similar shortcut. So I'm gonna go through my music and I'm just gonna put a marker. I'm just gonna click the letter M to set markers on the beats. So, you know, maybe I'll do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four for a little bit of a longer one, just to kind of vary. So I have some longer clips and some shorter clips, but they're all roughly on beat. So now I'm going to jump back into my larger freeform view. I'm gonna select the clips that I want. Okay, I want my face and then this sidewalk shot and then a flower over here and then the sky and then a tree. And then I'm going to jump back into this view and I'm going to drag my clips here to this little icon. And it's going to say, you know, I want these to go into the order that I selected them and I want to place them at markers. And then I want to ignore audio so that it uses my song that I've chosen and not the audio from the clips. And I'll hit okay. And now it's given me a little montage that's gonna play along with these markers that I set here. So that's kind of a fast way to do it or a way that you can play with if you're trying to just see what looks good. I often do it manually just because I think that's fun, um, but I just learned about this shortcut so I wanted to share it with you. But once we've gone through and we've laid out all of our clips in the order and the timing that we want them, now it's time to lay the text on top, which is kind of what makes a postcard a postcard, right? 
So I'm gonna show you three ways that you can do this and kind of make your text look interesting. And to do that, we're gonna jump into the graphics tab right here. So the simplest way we can do this is just to have a line of text, doesn't move, cuts in and out at the same time as our clip. To do that, I'm just gonna click on this little text tool here, and I'm going to click on that. I'm gonna type out when the sun starts setting is the first line of my little poem here. And then over here in the effect controls, I can change, you know, the font to a font that I use. I can change the size of the text. I can, you know, change how it's aligned, right? Or I can go back into essential graphics and align it, you know, to the center of my frame. Then down here, you know, I want it to last the entire duration of this clip. So I'm just gonna change the length and then it's just gonna cut out at the same time that my clip cuts out. I do this for like the majority of the lines because it's readable. It doesn't have to always be like moving around and wiggling and doing a bunch of fancy stuff. So that's the basic way to do it. Another thing that you'll see me do a lot is like I've got a line up on a clip and then suddenly the background goes black and it looks like the video is inside of the text and I use that to like emphasize something. I'm just gonna put a little cut here where I want it to like invert. And then I'm going to hit effects and then I'll go into video effects and into keying and then track matte key. So I'm gonna drag this onto my video clip that I want to like appear as if it is inside of the text. Then I'll go into my effect controls, scroll down to track map key, and then I want it to use my text as the map. So I am going to select video two because it's on the video two track. Now you have the sky behind the text. All of this is fairly simple so far, but sometimes I want to get a little fancy, right? Sometimes you'll see me do stuff like you know, a line moves around tracking with an object, or I walk in front of a line and it looks like it disappears behind me. Or even just, you know, when I have one line and then the next one kind of slides out behind it and gets revealed. That's all stuff that I do in After Effects. And you might be saying, Taylor, I'm trying to make my first video here. We're not doing multiple programs. And that's fine. I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not a master animator either. Sometimes there's an idea in my head and I'm editing late at night and I don't necessarily know how to bring that about and I don't have the time to learn. Maybe I just want a more kind of creative or professional or high production value animation that I can produce myself. So to do that, there's a great tool in Premiere, don't even have to go into another program called Motion Graphics Templates. And those are things that animators have created for you that you can edit and customize to your video, but you can get kind of a nicer look than you might be able to on your own. Say I wanted to do something like have kind of like a glitch effect on my text. I'm gonna go over to my clip where I want that to show up and see under this browse tab, you have templates. If I click Adobe Stock over here, there are a ton of what are called motion graphics templates or Mogerts that you can use to kind of give an elevated look. So I want, you know, a title here and I want something kind of, I'm gonna just search glitch title and see what pops up. All right, I'm looking at this one. This looks kind of interesting. I'm gonna drag this over onto my timeline and I'm going to change it to be the length of the clip that I'm using here. And then up here, I can edit it to say whatever I want. So I'm just gonna edit this to be one of the lines from my poem that I'm using, because we're doing this little sunset vibe. And then I can play this back and see what that looks like. That's very cool. I don't know how to do that on my own, but it's very much the same deal as the basic text tool that we used. So I can make this the font that I like to use. I can change the size. I can change the color. And you know what? I don't necessarily like the look of this kind of scrambled text back here. So I'm just gonna click the eye to make that not visible. And I just have my little line there. The great thing is as you get more comfortable building out graphics, you can even make your own mogurts, your own templates for things that you use a lot. 
So as I said before, sometimes I'll have one line that, you know, slides up and reveals another line. I actually made a Mogurt for that as I was editing my last video. I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can download that yourself and use it if you want to, but it's now saving me time as I go through and edit. And if I ever wanna use that effect, I can just take the template other than having to build it from scratch. So once I'm happy with where all my clips are laid out and how all my text is laid out, the last thing that I'll do to kind of tie the room together is color. So I might do some adjustments on a clip by clip basis, but in general, instead of going into each individual clip and you know changing the contrast and editing the color and all of that stuff, I will use what's called an adjustment layer. And that allows me to edit all of the colors across all my clips at once. So I'm just gonna go file, new, adjustment layer. And then I can drag this onto my timeline, extend it out for the length of my sequence here. And then I can jump into the color tab. So you see my nice Lumetri color panel here. And I like to keep the clip that I'm working with in the source window here so that I can compare what I'm doing. So first thing that I'm gonna do is under basic correction, edit the white balance. Maybe I want to, you know, add a little contrast, bring in the blocks a little bit down maybe increase the exposure a tiny bit, kind of get the clip generally looking right to my eye. And once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna jump down to creative and this is where I actually start getting to tell part of the story with my color. So one thing I like to play with is like all of these preset looks here and I can actually just tab through and see what kind of a vibe they have because I'm going for this kind of like sunset -y vibe. Maybe I'm gonna choose something that brings out some of those like golder, peachier tones. So that looks kind of interesting. I'm gonna choose this gold heat, but that's like pretty intense, right? Like it looks kind of weird. So I'm gonna bring the intensity way down. And now that looks compared to where we started, kind of more of that like, hazy, sunny, sunset kind of look that I'm going for. I'll often add this faded film effect to my postcards to kind of give me more of like a vintagey look. I'm gonna bring that up to say like 18. That's about as much as I wanna go. And then down at the bottom, I also like to put a bit of a vignette on here. So we'll take it down to negative one add a little bit more feather to kind of soften it up a bit. So once I'm happy with the color, that's pretty much a postcard. The reason that I started making this format of video was to start pushing myself creatively more, right? Like when I'm sitting over there in my bed just talking to the camera, it's pretty much the same color, it's the same editing style, the same kinds of graphics every time. But this gives me a lot more room to play and try new things. And I've really, really enjoyed learning and I'm glad that you've enjoyed those videos too. So my challenge to you, if you are a creator, if you've always wanted to be, but you just haven't started yet, is that you should make a video postcard from wherever you are, from a slice of your life. I mean, travel's still not really a thing yet. So this could be a way that we can all kind of share a little bit of our world with each other at a distance. Remember, you can download that Mogurt that I made for you and use that in your videos. Please share them with me on social media or in our Discord. Again, thank you for Adobe for sponsoring this video. Tell me in comments what you wanna make your video postcard about. And I will see you soon. Bye.